a video on um, cheesy pancakes. Again, layered cheesy pancakes. I've forgotten what I've called them. Uh, this might be video four. This might be video five. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, pancakes layered with cheese baked in the oven. A bit like a quesadilla, but with layers of pancake instead of tortillas. Tor tortillas? 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 Flatbreads. Uh, 100 grams of cheese per layer, 6 pancakes, uh, 500 grams of mixed cheese. We have got, so, we've got 250 grams of just cheap uh, red cheese. It might be red last, it might be lost, I can't remember. Uh, we've got about 50 grams of uh, hard Italian cheese. And then normally I would put in feta, um, but I put too much feta in once and it kind of ruined it. So what I thought I'd do is I'd have a go with making the, my own cheese curds which is pretty straightforward and if I haven't deleted the video uh, how I made it will be at the end of the video because you don't need to at the start because it's a bit boring it's, no it's not boring it, it's interesting uh, but I wanted to get straight into the video and if you're interested in how I made the curds it's at the end that easy you just bring the milk up to the boil add some lemon juice put a lid on it leave it it curdles it turns into a, like a creamy cheese type thing like that uh, that was about 2.2 litres so that and that um, it makes about 500 grams that's, that's 200 grams that's 200 grams, that's 50 grams, that's 250 grams, so that's about 200 grams. So with that, I reckon there's about 500 grams. So 2.2 litres of milk, approximately, uh, makes about 500 grams of a creamy cheese type thing. Uh, and because you use an acid like vinegar um, uh, or lemon juice, uh, it kind of uh, a little, uh, picks up a little bit of flavour of that. And I've just seasoned it with a little salt and pepper. It's quite nice, actually. It tastes a little bit like cream cheese, um, if I'm honest. So, we will... I've got it in the fork. I did have a fork. We'll mix the cheese. No, that's a spoon. We will mix the cheese uh, together and then we'll kind of see. I don't want to put my hands in it yet because I've still got things to move around. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, cheese is going everywhere. I'll probably know. I'll get my hands in. I'll get my hands in. It'd just be better. I've got my uh, dish, which is an old frying pan, which I've uh, taken the handle off it. So I can put it in the oven. Just a useful thing to have. So we'll mix this in. Yeah, so I just put a little bit of salt and pepper in with the, the curdy creamy cheese that I made. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of it. It was just a the feta made a um give a nice kind of texture, but I just wasn't too happy with the flavour. And then I did it again with mozzarella, um, which was really nice, but it was a little bit flat. Um, so I just wanted to have another go and I kind of thought we could make some curd cheese or cheese curds and see how that kind of turned out. I don't know how it's going to melt or anything like that. I haven't pressed it particularly very much. I just left it in the fridge in a muslin cloth um, for a couple of days. So I'm not going to weigh. We'll just kind of guess. So it's about into fifths, that's about fifths, fifth, 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 fifth. Okay, so, it's pretty straightforward. I want a decent pancake on the bottom. So we'll use that one on the bottom. And then, 100 grams of cheese, ah, which I worked out last time was a handful of cheese. So about a handful of cheese. And then we'll put a pancake on top, squish it down, and then uh, another layer of cheese, another pancake on top of that, and then I'm gonna put, because it's nice, you don't have to, but I'm gonna put some homemade uh, wild garlic pesto in between the pancake and the next layer of cheese. It's just a nice kind of flavour and just makes it just that little bit kind of different. Cheese not too close to the edge, so then you can see you just put pancake on top, squish down, and then we'll pause after this because you don't need to be making the rest of it up. And then it's in an oven, 200 degrees until it's nice and crisp, uh, and we'll probably turn it over halfway through. It'll take about 25 minutes to cook, something like that. So that's another. 100 grams of cheese on that layer and then we'll have to put the pancake on top of that and I'll have to wash my hands before I want to touch the... Well, I might be able to get over it. I'll show you what I'll do. I always... Uh, I'm always in two minds about things. I, I always kind of think, do you really need to kind of see that? Uh, I worry that... No, I don't worry. I just concern myself that my videos get a little bit too long at times. Yeah, so maybe some cheese squirting out would be a good thing. So that's fine. And then we'll try not to make too much of a mess with the wild garlic pesto. 
try not to get too much of the on top. So that's about two months old is that now. So it's still a lovely colour. So if you move the video, uh, I'm not sure it's under. Might be under forage food. But it's dead easy to make and it keeps for a year in the fridge and keeps its colour as well. So it's quite for the for the price of a bit of Parmesan or Pecorino, it's uh, it's a nice thing to kinda of make and give away as gifts. People always appreciate things like that, if they're into or garlic and all kind of stuff. So then, layer of cheese on top of that, pancake on top of that, carry on, pancakes the last layer, uh, and then bake in the oven. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. And maybe a flip over uh, the pancakes, flip over the pancake uh, halfway through cooking so uh, the top doesn't get too dried out. And we're done. I flipped it over halfway through. There you go, nice and crispy, nice and puffed up. We will turn the oven off. And uh, uh, will it come out in one go? I've drained some of the fat off as well. Ah! That's all right. Yeah, so it gets, because of the cheap red cheese, there's quite a lot of fat that comes out of it. But uh, keep it and use it for things. I uh, I did some fried bread with it and it was delicious. It was it was uh, a completely delicious uh, thing that I really shouldn't be eating. Um, but it's uh, only a bit very very rarely and it was very nice. So nice and crispy on top. Um, I've had a little bit from the outside and it was really nice. The uh, curd cheese works really well. So I suppose I should take a picture of it like that. No, I'm cut in half. Last one I made, I made it with um, flatbreads, um, tortillas, 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 and it was lovely. So you don't have to make the pancakes, it's just that I've always, I don't know why I've got it like that, I've always got things like eggs and flour and milk in the house. So it's just kind of quite easy to, oh look at that, that looks good does that? It's always kind of easy just to, to make some pancakes. Um, yeah. That looks particularly good. Maybe, maybe maybe making sure that the cheese pops out the side, kind of crisp it up on the outside. You live and learn, don't you? So yeah, I think that's going to be delicious. We'll take a picture so you can kind of get a better idea of it. Move some light um, But yeah, that looks good. I think the curd cheese will be very nice. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> are you going to are you going to make curd cheese to make this? I don't know. I am uh, because I was kind of curious. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, works works really well and looks really good as well. I think that's that's the best one yet. So we live and learn. So um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember. I'll go back through the videos and we'll kind of see if, see if I need to kind of do another one uh, with just 200 grams of feta and 250 grams of red cheese and 50 grams worth of hard Italian cheese. I think I might have done that one already. But that's that's nice. Those bits around the outside that looks really good. Anyway, delicious. Um, completely indulgent and. Um, Probably send you to an early grave, but no, 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 well, yeah, I, I do care. Um, but delicious, and as long as you don't have any fire out on a regular basis, um, then uh, kind of well worth eating. So, this is how I'm gonna make the cut curds, uh, like cheese curds type of thing. So, uh, it's 2.2 liters of milk, uh, I've brought it up to the boil, and then I'm gonna add some vinegar to it, which will curdle it and uh, make the curds. And then we might just we'll put in two tablespoons of just cider vinegar, but any old vinegar will do. Give it a mix around. I think two will be fine. We'll give it three. No, we'll give it two. Two will be fine. Put a lid on. And we'll just let it stand for about half an hour and then we'll come back, see if the curds are formed and we'll just have a play around and then uh, what we'll probably do is we'll cook the curds slightly as well so it goes uh, a little bit more like a squeaky cheese type of thing. Um, so it's kind of a, a more of a texture type of thing that I'm kind of going for. But anyway, that's it, it's pretty straightforward. It's also kind of how you make a ricotta-ish, ish. Um, I never make anything entirely properly, so there's all, most things I do are in a niche, and it's how I get around uh, not really knowing what I'm doing most of the time, faffing around, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, there we go. Right, we have curds. That's pretty straightforward. I've just let it cool down slightly, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it some heat underneath. 
the uh, pan and you just need to be a little bit careful if, if any of the curds have settled on the bottom of the pan there's a tendency that they're going to catch you're supposed to do things in a uh, double boiler which is one pan inside another pan uh, with a water jacket in between them all so you get more uh, an even distribution of heat uh, but i'm going to throw those rules out the window uh, because i'm just going to be careful instead so what i'm actually trying to do is i'm just going to cook the curds just that little bit and then it will um, the cheese will be slightly firmer so don't really know what I'm doing with this no I don't but I've made other types of cheese before so we'll just have to kind of see if we kind of wing it I kind of know what I'm doing ish or I've got an idea of what I want to do I just want to make the curds just that little bit cooked like you would do with a, a mozzarella that's not what I wanted to hear so and then what we'll do is we'll put it through a um, strainer with a cloth inside it and we'll collect the curds and the whey will fall out through the bottom underneath as you can see the way is not that clear so it's not that clear which means there's actually some milk protein still left in there so we could add some more there we go i've put it away but we might do we might just slightly heat once we've strained it we might uh, just uh, heat up the way again and then go, we'll get a little bit more curd out of it not going to be proper cheese anyway because I've made it with vinegar rather than rennet and the bacteria. All I'm really wanting to do is split the cheese into curds and whey. So I just found when I made the pancakes with too much feta it was just the texture was all right it was just the taste of the feta it was a little bit too overpowering it's not it's not feta greek style cheese greek chalet, uh, salad cheese but it was just a little bit too overpowering so the curd element of it was kind of quite nice i mean feta is quite a simple cheese but it was just a, like a, too much of a, of a feta flavor to it i keep calling it feta it's not but i know what i'm talking about i know what i'm trying to say so Texture of the pancakes, pretty good, but they won't call it not so good. Sink my finger in, it's quite hot, is that? I actually want them to be kind of quite curdy rather than uh, a ricotta, which is kind of quite smooth. I actually want to cook the curds. So it goes more. Uh, I don't. Mm, I don't know. If, I don't really know. Subscribe. What I'm kind of going for, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm breaking up the curds. I shouldn't do. But it's fine. finger in it's a good measure of if you can't keep your finger in it only means that it's over 70 degrees let's call it that's just about it I think Let's call it that. I don't want to boil it. 
We'll leave it at that. It's quite hot, is that? Yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll turn the temperature off and put the lid back on. And then hopefully we'll give it a strain to cool down a bit. And then we'll see how things are gonna go. Right, so because we've cooled down, we just need to now put them through a cloth. So it's a clean cloth, it's just a bit stained because I use it for all kinds of things. The curds aren't in particularly big clumps, but I'm not that bothered. And we just need to strain the curds from the way and let it drain so we can get rid of as much of the whey as possible. And then we'll just be left with the curds. And I want quite a, a firm curd. So I'm going to leave it overnight. And then you'll see what they look like at the start of the video. But you get the idea. Pretty straightforward. Can save the way and use it for other things I've made. I've turned it into. Um, I've used it for the water in sourdough in the past as an experiment, and then it worked. Uh, well, the, not the water, but the liquid in the, sou in the sourdough. And I've also used it for the liquid in um, soda bread as well. So you don't waste it. You know, and if it's a little bit cloudy, it means that there's still some protein left in it. It should be crystal clear by the time you've finished. So you can sometimes reboil it and add a bit more vinegar and then you get um, you get some more curds out of it but there you go pretty straightforward and you'll see what it turns out like at the start of the video